a new trail that we hear with forecast of snow and sun, but, uh, single degree temperatures, then going out on the beach and putting my, my, my feet in the uh, in the white sand. It's certainly much, much better to be here. It's a good fire, though. Don't you think it's a good fire? Put your hands it's a good fire. Just trying to make sure you're all still awake. Um, I terribly miss all of you, but I think you have been very well fed today. Uh, I thought Mark's story about the gym, I thought it was a great story. I think there's so much to learn from that story. There's so, so much power in, in what he told about leveraging their talents and growing into that business. If you get a chance, uh, go, go pick his brain about those people in that story again later. That was, that was a brilliant story. I thought uh, Curtis's presentation on managers everything Let's learn that. Let's let's figure out what, what does managers everything mean. Well, how do we take that to heart? How do we make sure managers everything is for us? I, I loved. Can you see why we hired Melissa? Yeah. Yeah. Can you see why we hired that? The, the amount of energy and the brilliance she brings to the table. Thought that was a great exercise. Start, stop, continue. I love that. Um, and and Wendy's comment about quiz mechanism. Of course, I'm a big baseball sports fan, so I love that that uh, that movie. But the whole idea of Block out everything. There's history, there's fans, there's noise. The world is full of noise right now. It's so full of noise that that phrase, clear the mechanism, is super important. So I think you've already been re really richly fed. I, I can't help myself. I'm so excited about where we're going. I gotta tell you, I had a meeting uh, on la last, the Friday before Christmas. So, so Friday, I think the 24th. I was supposed to be out of the office, I was supposed to be taking time off, but I had a one-on-one -on -one scheduled with Wendy, and, uh, and I just said, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play pickleball with a couple of guys in the morning, I'll just come in after that, and, and, uh, and uh, just, we'll, have, we'll do our one-on-one -on -one and I'll go home. I expected to be home about, I don't know, 10? I, I didn't expect it to take very long. I think I got home until about two that afternoon, because our conversation was so engaging, and so exciting and thrilling, and even though it ended, relatively quickly, as I walked down the hallway, I saw something and I almost grabbed him like, I'm so excited, let me tell you, let me just do that, I'm so excited. And they were like, okay, you need a break, it's good for you to, to go and take some time off. And then I walked down the hallway another couple of steps and I found somebody else and I was like, I can't believe you this is so great. So where we're going is, is, is an exciting vision and uh, as we get there, we're gonna evolve our language. Now again, if you spend time with me, Curtis accuses me of being a words with friends snob. Um, that, that I am a, someone who loves words. I love the play of words together. I love how they interact. I love the turn of a phrase. I love well-spoken things. Uh, I have a book on my shelf that, uh, which would surprise no one. It's called The Great Speeches. Uh, and it is, it is a, a, an accumulation of all the greatest speeches in, in all of history. I wish I had a video recording of all of them. Who wouldn't love, have loved uh, to have heard various speeches throughout time, have been there in those moments when those speeches were given? So I love the way phrases and, and, and words sound. And so there's some phrases that if I were the, the sole judge, I would want to eliminate from the, the world that we live in, the, the world of, of Zingar. For example, how many times have you heard a phrase similar to this one? Is this a pyramid scheme? <laughs> if it were up to me, I would eliminate that phrase. I hate that phrase. There's nothing about that phrase that I like. I want it to go. It's typically followed with something like, because you know, I watch the Lula Rich and I know everything. Uh, no, you don't. And, and there's nothing about that phrase that makes sense and has any bearing on who we are and what we do at Singular. So I hate that one. Here's another phrase that I hate. That I hate. You know, um, I, I, I'm very careful about what I put in my body. <laughs> yeah, that's true for some people. Many of the people, however, who just said who said that to you just now, just got finished eating a Taco Bell. <laughs> and there's nothing at Taco Bell that's actually human, or human for human consumption. Not. <laughs> so that there's something in there that we're allowed to consume. But the Taco Bell is not about the great ingredients, right? You know, uh, you never hear them say, better ingredients, better tacos, Taco Bell. That's, that's a different company's <laughs> slogan. Because what happens when people say is, I'm very picky about, about what I put in my body, what they're trying to get you to do is to go through all the ingredients for them. I want to stop that. Um, I want to stop, I would like us to stop using some phrases too. Here's a phrase that I would like us to stop using. Anybody can do this. 
Why do you think I want to stop using that phrase? Anybody can do this. Well, the reality is, what you really mean is there's no barrier to entry for anyone to try this. But that sounds clunky. Nobody says that to people. Oh, well, let's talk about barriers to entry to your business model. Nobody talks like that. So when we're talking about anybody can do this, what you're saying is, look, everybody has a chance. Everybody has an opportunity. But the reality is it takes certain kinds of people to be really good at this. And you know this because you've had people who want to try this and struggle. And you, you, you yourselves have demonstrated that you are the kind of people who can do this. But the zeros in your back office indicate not everybody is. So I, I would rather say I can help you. I'd like to replace the phrase Look, come, come do this. Anybody can do this. I don't want that to go away. What I'd like to have the phrase is, come do this, I can help. That phrase, I can help, should be part of everything that we do. Yes, you can do this, even if you don't know you can, because I, I've been where you're going, I can help. I know where the rocks are. I know where the, the difficulties are, I can help. So instead of saying, look, anybody can do this, makes it sound like it's easy, Makes it sound like it's, it's, you know, oh, come on, this is a snap. Anybody can do this. No, 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 anybody can't. Everybody has the same opportunity, but you can do this because I can help. I'd rather have that phrase be, be used instead of anybody can do this, the phrase I can help. Here's another one that I'd like to do away with. And this is not going to make Curtis very happy because he likes this phrase. I don't like the, I don't like, well, it's just a word. I don't like the word duplication. Duplication. Why, why don't I like the word duplication? Well, who can duplicate you? The problem with duplication is that you're part of the equation. Why don't you look around the room and look at the, some of the truly rock stars in the room and look and see what they, who they are and think to yourself, am I that? That's a daunting question. Imagine if you look over at, at Cynthia Evans and say, can I do what Cynthia does? Have you ever watched Cynthia Evans cold contact somebody? I, I had the opportunity to sit next to her on a, a the, the boat that takes you, I don't know what it's called, the boat that takes you from the cruise ship to the shoreline excursion, the launch, whatever it's called, the, the transport boat. <laughs> and she reached out to a couple that was sitting there next to us, and within minutes, instantly, they were best friends. And by the end of the, of the cruise, the person had signed up under Cynthia, and they were thick as thieves. It was amazing to watch. I sat there almost with my jaw on the floor, <laughs> and I thought, this is why she's so good at what she does. She can, she can warm someone's heart, to her and her, her husband and to the business opportunity like no one else. Can you duplicate Cynthia? Can you do it? That's why I don't like the term duplication. What I'd rather use is I'd like you get in your head the concept of leverage. What does leverage mean? Leverage means instead of saying, I have to be Cynthia, I have to be other people who are great, I have to be so good at, at boards as, as, as Danielle is, I have to be so good at, at, uh, at Facebook Lives as, as Ursula Myers. I have to be so good at, at, and so on and so on and so on. Instead of thinking that you have to be all things, all people, because you're trying to duplicate, what you simply have to do is say, I'm going to leverage my talents. I'm going to help people who have other talents be part of my team. This is a team-based business. This is not an individual business. This is a team-based business. This is why we call it network marketing. It's network for a reason. You need to build a network. So go get your network, go get your teams. Don't try to duplicate Cynthia or Ursula or Danielle or any of the other leaders who are so brilliant because you're not them, you're you. You have your own set of talents. You have your own abilities to bring to the table. So when we're talking about duplication, yes, we're talking about taking simple things and, and making them duplicate, but don't forget, you're part of the equation. So help people understand that their duplication is not just doing what you do, and yours is not just trying to, to do what someone, someone else does, but trying to take it and make it yours. Um, here's another one that uh, I'd like to see disappear from our, from our singular phrase. Oh, I, I can't talk about that because, you know, compliance might, might hear me. Um, I understand why that, where that's coming from. Here's what I want you to replace that thought with. Tell your story, publish how your story made you feel. Think about that for a minute. Tell your story, but publish how your story made you feel. A problem that we have is publishing things that make the, the governing bodies uh, nervous. They have all kinds of work for this. I'm not gonna go into this, but what I want you to understand of course you can tell your story. Tell the truth, tell it factually, but tell it, don't publish it. Does that make sense? 
Um, you talking to your friends and talking to them about your life is totally reasonable because you're not setting an expectation that this is everybody who does this. This is you telling your story. But as soon as you publish it, it becomes an expectation that everyone can reach the same levels you've reached or have the same results you've had. That's when it gets to be problematic. But publish how your story made you feel. Man, I've, I've been part of Zingator for four months now and I feel amazing. I've lost some weight, I've got more energy, and I've found a community of people that I love. You know what, if you're interested in that kind of thing, let me reach out to you and tell you how I got to where I've got. Now you're talking. Now you said something that you can, you can support, uh, and you can reach out to them in a way that's more direct and you can tell them your, your story because telling your story truthfully and meaningfully in a, in a uh, more private setting is perfectly acceptable. But publishing that story can get us into some trouble. So I'd like to, to get out of the fear of, oh, oh, I can't say that. Yes, you can, just you can't publish it. There's a difference. Share your story, share it truthfully. Make sure you're, 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 you're telling the, the, the parts of your story that, that are true to you and then make sure that what you're, what you're publishing to the world is, is the way that your story makes you feel. Here's, here's another uh, um, uh, phrase I'd like to eliminate, and I'll tell you what I'd like to replace it. The phrase is, lead with the business. Now, you heard Mark say we need to help find more business um, people. Uh, you heard Curtis say we need to find more enrollers, we need to turn more enrollers into more managers. And that sounds like, like leading with the business to me. But here's what leading with the business sounds like to someone else. It sounds like you're trying to push a business opportunity on them. Um, I'd rather you think about this phrase instead. Run a business. When you think about leading with the business, that's a sales technique. When you think about running a business, that's you being the CEO of your own business. You are the CEO of your business. You have a business in your home right now. It's a singular business with your name on it. It's your, you own it, you can sell it, you can, you can bequeath it to, to, to descendants, um, you can do, it's yours, right? It's a business. Think about it like a business. So here's some phrases that we use in business that I'd like to suggest you maybe incorporate into your business. One of them is this, what's the highest and best use of my time? Is this thing I'm doing right now the highest and best use of my time. You just have a great exercise, right? The, the, the start, stop, or stop, start, continue, right? Oh. Excuse me, just a second. I haven't talked this much in days. <laughs> that's pure COVID water right there. That's, that's <laughs> um, highest and best use of your time. What do we mean by highest and best use? In any given moment, you have to make a decision between a million different things you could do with your time. All right, so what's the highest and best use of your time in that moment? It's not every moment is leading with the business. Um, it may be in this moment, the well, highest and best use of your time is being with your, your family, being with your children, spending time renewing yourself and the things that matter the most to you. Uh, I, I sometimes hear people getting burned out and they say, I just can't do this anymore, I'm running too fast. I'm, I'm putting so much time on neglecting other things. And my, my advice to them is stop it. Stop doing that. Don't, don't sacrifice the things that matter the most for something else. You know, your family, your, your relationships, your, your, your life is so much more richer and fuller if you take your time to do those things that matter the most and use these other things to support that. Why are you doing your singular business in the first place? Hopefully, is to give you some monetary freedom to enable you to do things more with your family, hope that it gives you some time freedom to free you up to do more things with the people that you love. So make sure your highest and best use of your time is sometimes is family. Sometimes it's it's simply, you know what? This is somebody who just needs uh, an encouraging work. It's somebody who just needs somebody to say, I'm here for you. And sometimes it's, let me introduce you to our amazing product. And sometimes it's, have you considered this as a business opportunity? But it's not just a drumbeat of being everybody over the head with the same thing. Uh, if, you, if you try to treat everybody the same, you won't get anything near the same results. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I remember once I heard a, a very wise uh, uh, child psychologist said, uh, treat all of your children the same by treating all of them differently. They're different people, your children, 
They're different people. They need to be treated differently. And to treat them all fairly, you have to treat them differently. It's the same with all the people you talk to. Uh, some years ago, I had a, 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 a brother-in-law who was in a, a, a life insurance business. And every time I saw him, he'd come up to me and he would say, Ready my life insurance yet? 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 It got to be so annoying. We stopped going to family events because we didn't want to run into that brother. Uh, hallelujah, the day my wife's sister divorced him because that was great. Uh, no more of that. But the, the message from him was, I actually don't care about you as a person. I don't care about you as a person. To me, the only thing you are to me is a potential life insurance policy. And that's not us. That's not who we are. We never want to be those people. So instead of thinking about leading with the business, think about running a business. What does your business need? How do you serve your business today? We're going to, have to be working with you over the course of the next year and years to talk about what does it mean to run a business, to be the CEO of your own business. So I want you to, to uh, remember that because you are the CEOs of your business. Um, one last thing that I'd like you to think about. One last phrase that I'd like you to incorporate into, uh, into what you're doing. Uh, it's what I call the genius of small. Now we're talking about growing big. We want to grow big as a company. Our vision is really large. We talk about expanding internationally. We just barely scratched the surface in the, in the United States and in Canada. We're just barely getting started in the Philippines. Our vision is huge. It's as big as the whole outdoors. We want to go big. Well, how do you go big? You go big by working small. You break those big visions. We want to be a half a billion dollar, a billion dollar company. We want to be a household name. We want to be in millions of people's homes and lives. And now it's about the next call, the next person, the next meeting. It's all about the genius of breaking those visions down into small bite-sized pieces. If you've already been, uh, to a headquarters retreat, you may have heard me give my elephant box speech. Um, if you've heard it, share it with people here at, uh, at uh, Amherst Club. If you haven't heard it, ask somebody to tell it, tell it uh, because the genius of everything we do is in the genius of small. Small things repeated often enough become big things. Big things then grow on each other and become extraordinary things. Um, we have had an extraordinary couple of years. And um, there's nothing ordinary about 2020 or 2021. Uh, I, I saw a, a meme uh, on the internet the other day that said, please, please, nobody say, you know, this is my year about 2022. We all agree that we're going to sneak up on 2022 and not disturb it for a while to see what it's going to do for us. Poppy I don't believe that for a second. Grab this by the horns and let's go. I'm tired of waiting around. I'm tired of waiting to see what the world is going to do. Let's tell the world what we're going to do. I want to go forward. I'm tired of waiting uh, for the next uh, strain of something, something to come on the <laughs> upside down. Whatever is next. I'm tired of that. I don't want to wait for that. I want to go forward. I don't want to wait to find out what the economy is going to do. We're going to move independent of the economy. We're going to move forward despite inflation because. We have something that people need in their lives. They need better health, and they need a business opportunity that doesn't depend on the rest of the economy. It's independent from the rest of the economy. It's one of the powers of our business model. Uh, I'm, I'm getting worked up, which means I'm gonna start coughing here in a second. I love you. I, as, as Curtis said, it really broke my heart. I tested positive for COVID on Thursday. It just isn't in the cards for me to be able to make it even part of next week. I, I'm still uh, symptomatic, and so they say you're supposed to wait. You know, depending on uh, uh, which website you read, anywhere from two to 7,200 days after you have symptoms. <laughs> and so I'm not going to make it down to the uh, Dominican Republic. But I want you to know how important you are to me. Um, uh. I have opportunities to do other things. I come across my desk from time to time. Uh, I have uh, you know, people who say, don't you miss being back at the White House? Don't you miss being back in Washington? And the answer is, I do miss it. I love that. But I don't miss enough to skip this. This is what this is like. I love what we do here. This is who we are. 
And so those opportunities come and I smile and I say, thank you very much. Let me tell you what I got to do today. And every day I get to tell them something that's meaningful and worthwhile to me. That's what you bring for me. And not being with you is uh, very, very hard. So with that, I love you. Uh, I'm so excited by what the future is bringing. I think we have an amazing team. Uh, I'm so excited for the Zoo Distributor Success Team under Melissa's leadership. I think that will be outstanding. Uh, and uh, God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you,